What's that guy doing? Is he a goalie? Who does he play for? Oh, that looks really interesting. Welcome to Goalie Training Pro TV episode 40. Every time we get to something divisible by five, I get a little excited. And one day we actually will have a party, but it's not today. Um, today we're gonna talk about, I know I'm gonna say it, what to expect if you have to have surgery for FAI, if you have to have impingement surgery. I know, don't shoot the messenger. So first of all, so what brought me to this is I'm writing a new article and it's actually gonna be the most comprehensive article I probably have ever written for goalietrainingpro.com. Um, and so probably in nine years, this is the most comprehensive article. I'm having flashbacks to when I did my master's of science degree. <laughs> That's how in depth it is. So I'm pulling out all the articles, ones I've read years ago, the newest ones, and I'm gonna do a really comprehensive resource on hip impingement for goalies. But what I wanted to do right now is just hop on and, and kind of quickly go over um, what to expect if you if you do have surgery. So hip impingement is basically when the um, the ball of the joint, so hips a ball and socket joint. The ball is attached to my femur. It's attached to my thigh bone. The socket is attached to my pelvis. Well, sometimes just the way we're put together, we're not a perfect fit. Sometimes the head of the femur is a little misshapen. Sometimes the socket is a little misshapen or it's a little tilted this way or tilted that way. Um, so sometimes it's just the way we are. Sometimes combined maybe with a little bit the way we are, we put ourselves in positions where we're kind of butting the, the neck um, of the femur into the socket. And that kind of responds by creating a callus, much like if you're out there digging in the yard or like, you know, like everyone was trying to do here, rake up their leaves before more snow came. You get calluses on your hands. Well, on your hand, those calluses are skin. On your joint, those calluses are bone. Um, and so then that creates more impingement and more trouble. So um, the, I guess the other point is that it you don't feel it until you feel it. <laughs> so it's if they do, and again, I'll cover this in the article, but they do x-rays of athletes who are asymptomatic have no hip pain whatsoever like and I'm really terrible at remembering numbers so don't quote me but like 20% of them have FAI but they don't feel any symptoms so um, but what things what movements put your hip in more of an impinged position this is gonna be pretty interesting so it's flexion Okay, so that's bringing your thigh up towards your body. It's adduction, so bringing your leg across your body, and it's internal rotation. <laughs> so let's think about this in terms of goaltending. What do we do that would be uh, internal rotation, adduction, <laughs> uh, and then even to add to that, like we're playing more like play down on the puck, Flexion. So, you know, you can see how a lot of the positions, even just being in the butterfly or butterfly, if you're, you know, trying to get forward, put your hip in that stress position. It's not to say that every goalie will get FAI, but it just isn't a natural position for the hip to be in. Um, and it's not just butterfly either. When they look at sort of, if you're pushing from your post, T push to the top of your crease, let's say, and then you come around and you know, when you kind of stop and you swing your pelvis on your femur, that actually creates the most, the greatest magnitude of internal rotation at the hip. So, it, and it's really very, like it, it sounds alarming, like, oh my God, but you know, if you think of a pitcher, like pitcher shoulders aren't designed to do that. And pitchers have a lot of wear and tear issues in their shoulder. And we're the same with our hips. So we need to take, try to take steps to help reduce and minimize that, that wear and tear. But let's say, like some of you, no matter what you do, even baseball pitchers, they're gonna have to have shoulder surgery. So let's say you have to have FAI surgery. Here's what to expect. Expect the unexpected. 
because it's going to be different for everybody. I've helped rehab and return to sport about 12, a dozen or so. And it's always, for me anyway, it's always been different, which is really weird because when I worked at the sport medicine clinic, like if it was an ACL tear or ACL reconstruction, you know, like boom, boom, boom. Like these are the milestones. This is where you should be. You're either ahead of schedule or behind schedule. Um, same with shoulder surgeries, but FAIs were always so different. So you're gonna have days when you feel like, oh my God, I'm, I'm over the hump. I'm, I'm good to go. I'm fine. It's gonna be steady sailing from here. And then the very next day, you're gonna be like, I had hip pain. I don't know, maybe, maybe they didn't fix it. Maybe it's still there. And that might last for four or five days. And we're, we're both like, like these are the worst because no one can sleep. We're both like, oh my God, like what if they need another surgery? And then, oh no, now it feels really, really good. <laughs> so it's gonna be a roller coaster like that. Um, you have to be patient, it's not, and it's hard because goalies, a lot of you got really good by working very hard. So your answer, and I was the same way as an athlete, my answer is to throw more work at it. In this case, you can't do that because your hip is gonna have, when they do that surgery and, and reshape either your socket or the ball or, or a combination of both, you're actually gonna have more range than what you had before. Your body doesn't know how to use or control that at all. So you need to learn that, you need to give it time to heal. So you have to be really, really patient with it. Um, the first year is the hardest. Even if you return to play, I don't know that I've, I can't think of any athlete who once they got back to play, you know, say eight months after their surgery was like, oh yeah, I'm perfect, like I'm good. I'm sure it's happened, but um, even they still feel, ah, it just doesn't feel quite right or it's still a bit achy. But often the second year it's like, yeah, I'm good. Um, it's not kind of like an ACL, whereas and this used to happen in the clinic pretty regularly. Someone's knee would feel so good that they'd think, well, I'm just gonna go out and do some running or I'm just gonna do some agility drills because it feels really good. And then they'll tear their graft and, and they've ruined it. And so now they have to have another surgery. With FAI, and I'm not saying be blase about it and, and work, you know, bust through pain, but once you get through that healing phase and that rehab phase and that return to sport phase, it's not really so much unless they've done some other kind of surgery along with it. It's not so much you're gonna ruin it because really they just are reshaping those surfaces. So it's not like you're gonna tear a graft and then automatically go back for surgery. If your symptoms persist, even though you're doing all the right rehabilitation with a physiotherapist and then you've done a good return to sport program, working with your strength coach and your physiotherapist and you know, to get back on the ice, you started with just skating and then a bit of skating with pads on and then a few easy standing goalie movements with pads, you know, over months. Um, if you're doing all that, it's, it's not, you're not gonna just ruin it. Um, you know, they've reshaped it and if you're still having pain and you've done everything right and it's persisting, 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 then it's time to look at, hey, maybe Maybe we missed a spot. Maybe there's a spot that's still rubbing or impinging or there's a labral tear that we missed or something like that. And they might have to go back in and reshape it, which is like, oh my God, are you kidding me? But it does happen. Um, and, but then, you know, usually you can come back. So return to sport, return to play is actually really good with the surgery um, and even playing at the professional level. So it's not like all oh, this, you know, like a baseball pitcher, a lot of times they'll lose their velocity when they've had shoulder surgery. And so it, it makes it a little harder are coming back they have to adapt more return to elite level pro level is really really good after this surgery but it just takes time it's frustrating it's upsetting um, but eventually you'll get there so that's just a little snippet on it um, that article is probably gonna take me at least I'm thinking at least three weeks to put together but um, stay tuned, I'll let you know when it's all set up. It's gonna be sort of more than you ever wanted to know about hip impingement. <laughs> so my inner geek is, uh, is gonna be shining brightly there. But that's it for episode number 40 of Goalie Training Pro TV. If you wanna try to reduce some wear and tear on your hips, 
so that you know you you can use the mobility that you have a little bit better do check out the butterfly challenge it's free it's a 14-day hip mobility program for goalies um, and you can just get it at goalietrainingpro.com there's a little box on the home page this is download your free goalie stretching program um, just click on that it's something like that don't quote me but just click on that and you'll get it um, but that will help sort of reduce some of the wear and tear and then too especially if you're a young kid you know just because you can doesn't mean you should so you shouldn't be like just boom 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 in the butterfly and smashing into your RVH because that's cumulative wear and tear that you know it feels fine now when you're 12 years old but then when you're you know 19 20 21 when you're really hitting your stride and maybe getting some really serious opportunities to play college or junior or pro now you've got this hip pain and it has to be fixed at that stage so there you go i'll catch you later bye bye